I'm 15 years old. I'm now 17 weeks pregnant. Most 15 year olds don't plan to get pregnant. But Zena has wanted a baby of her own for the last seven years. I think I was about eight years old when I first started thinking about settling down and having children. Basically, that's all my ambition is to have a family and be a housewife, full time mum. <laughs> oh, bless him. What's she done to my little boy? Read his hat. What has she done? Zena lives with her mum and dad in a two bed council house on Great Yarmouth Seafront. What's she done? Her 18-year-old sister, Emma, moved out a year ago after becoming a mum to baby Faith. Hey, free again. Go on, run. Go on, run, quick. I've got no idea why Zena wants a baby. <laughs> I would rather she got pregnant, like, in a few years' time, when she had experienced a bit more life, but we did try to talk her out of it, not to ever have a baby so young. Yeah. Uh, no, she yeah. just wanted a family early, didn't she? She yeah. said she'd have a career after she'd had a family, so mm. she's doing it back to front. I've never really felt like a child. I've always felt more mature. You know, I've never had the teenage life. Um, I've never wanted to really go out clubbing. I want to be able to find that right person and just settle down with them and basically that's what I've done. Like that for Tango. Come here. And that for Spam. Give me your hands. The father-to-be is 19-year-old Chris. Bug off! I don't want Flump waking up. They've been together for almost two years. Basically, we started talking about having children the first night he blew me around me. I was just saying to him, what my dreams were and he was saying to me what he wanted to do with his life and it come out and he turned around and goes, well, yeah, I want children as well. I thought there was something special about her and she obviously thought the same and we've been together since. It's just that something clicked inside and basically I just knew he was the one. Over the last two years, Chris has become part of the family. Well, not part of the family, part of the furniture. Our furniture's more like him, isn't it, Chris? Yep. Didn't like you, though, when I first met you, did I? We got to know him. We got to like him. Now he's... he's always here, haven't you? My adopted family. He likes the cooking, that's what the problem is. Chris lives on his own in a one-bedroom council flat near Great Yarmouth Town Centre. That's the scale of mine and Zena's baby at nine weeks and three days. That'll be one of the best achievements I've done in my life, I reckon, bringing up a child. He struggles with depression and is currently unemployed. I can't wait. I told Zena I'm going to be there every step of the way with her, every scan, midwife, at the birth. She wants me to be holding her hand. Everyone in the family was surprised when Zena fell pregnant. So all oh, she's ever been going on about, really, isn't she? Yep. Since a young age. First she started going on about me having a baby. I said, I can't have any more children. And then she started going on about, she wants a baby. You know where they play with the dolls and she says, I'm going to have a baby. It was like that sort of thing, really, with her. But she wanted the baby, not a doll. Nice, it kept saying to her, when you be a big girl, you have your own baby. I thought, yeah, when you're married, you know, but not now, <laughs> but there you are. That's Zena. I just had her. It's hard to believe she's having her own baby. Yeah, it's what she wants. It's our baby. I was 14 when we started trying for a baby. My parents said, keep safe, use something. And of course we were for the first five months. And then we just thought, well, let nature take its course. I think I only put that on. Zena's parents banned the couple from having sex at home, but there was no stopping them. They used to go across to a hiding place they've got, 
like is in the back of the field where there's some trees and bushes. That's where they used to disappear to. Or down the beach. Or down the beach. In a matter of letting her have sex underage, as you say, she, regardless of whether you say, yeah, all right, you can go out and have sex, or no, you can't go out and have sex, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it regardless. I mean, you can't lock her up. After 18 months of trying, Zena finally got the news she'd been waiting for. That was a happy moment to see that test come back positive. I reckon that'll be one of the happiest days of my life because I knew that basically my dream's going to co finally come true. I want a massive bump, I don't want a small bump. I want people to be able to call me fat and turn around and go, yeah, well, I've got an excuse for it. What's yours? <laughs> I've always, always said I want a natural birth. Um, I don't want, like, a C-section or epidural or anything like that. The way I see it is you have the natural birth, you bond better with the baby. Because then, you know, you've had that experience of all the pain, going through the labour and actually giving birth. It's common, hair on your belly when you're pregnant. Yeah, I mean, look at it. I'm starting to go like Dad, a blooming gorilla. You have to get a soft hairbrush, I need a comb for mine. So far, her pregnancy hasn't been plain sailing. Bring me up a glass of water, please. She keeps passing out. Apparently, young girls who are pregnant, they, they have a low blood pressure, and that's what causes them to pass out a lot more. She just has to take things a bit easier than most people. There are a lot of worries. During your first 12 weeks, you've got to worry about, like, you know, miscarriage, things like that. And then you've got to worry about, like, birth defects. Zena's mum lost a baby at 21 weeks. I think with me losing a baby, Zena does get a bit worried about the negative side of pregnancies. But she's got to realise that not every pregnancy is the same. I don't think I would cope with it if I went through all this and ended up with a stillborn baby. You know, that would rip me to shreds. Despite her worries about her pregnancy, Zena is still smoking ten cigarettes a day. You need light, so... I've been smoking since I was eight years old. It was basically because I got in with the wrong crowd. They give me a fag and ever since then I've been smoking. Zena is aware that smoking increases her risk of miscarriage and almost doubles the risk of a stillbirth. But she's undeterred. My midwife said it's better for me to stop smoking. Um, but I know I may as well carry on smoking because if I stop, I'm going to get too stressed. So... She was diagnosed with ADHD two years ago. She usually takes medication to control her mood swings, but since getting pregnant, she's had to stop. In one way, I'm bothered about it, but in another way, I ain't, because she ain't taking her ADHD tablets and it keeps her calm, having a fag as well. But in another way, I am bothered because of the baby. Zena's received a letter from the NHS about her smoking. What does it say? It says, you didn't arrive for your last appointment with Anne, our stop smoking advisor. I hope everything is OK. I have arranged another appointment for you. Can you please ring me if this isn't convenient? Are you going to stop smoking? No. Yeah. Um, we were just ringing up to uh, cancel like, any further appointments sort of thing. No, thanks. Hello, let us in. The couple often visit Zena's sister, Emma, and her six-month-old baby, Faith. Um. They live just around the corner from her parents' house in a council flat. How are you feeling? All right. Tired? Emma fell pregnant at 16, but Zena had wanted to be the first to have a baby. 
Funny. Feels weird. When we first found out that Emma was pregnant, I resented her. I absolutely hated her guts because it felt like she had done it to spite me. I mean, me and Chris were already trying for a baby. She'd done it before us, so I hated her. She was like a bit moody with me and didn't really want to talk to me and everything else. And Mum turned around and said that she just needs to get used to the idea. And what made you stop hating her then? Her. How can you still hate someone for bringing something so gorgeous into the world? Oh, God. Tomorrow, nine o'clock, I've got my 20 week scan. So hopefully, find out what sex it is as well. I'm excited. But I'm not, I'm not bothered what it is, though. Everyone thinks I'm having a little girl. I don't know. I don't really care as long as it's healthy. I get worried about her because, like, where she's so skinny and everything, people keep saying, like, her body won't be able to handle it. So she's always had that in her mind because she's so skinny, something bad might happen to the baby. <laughs> Having a baby means everything to Zena. It's provided a focus in her life that was missing before. I've got to move your chair out of the way. I see you bummed. Zena was bullied and hasn't been to school for two years. Instead, she attended an education centre for young women. I've never been one of the popular ones. Basically, the way I see it is if the face don't fit, they don't like you. It got really bad in middle school. They used to prod her with pencils. A certain night, she'd come home, and I counted three marks where you could lift the T-shirt up at the back, and you could still see that, that she'd been stabbed in the back with a pencil. Even one so, point where Zena yeah. tried to commit suicide over it all, the bullying. And, OK, she, she only drank shampoo and that, but she thought she was killing herself because of the bullying was that bad. Then I went to high school and I got jumped by a group of other children. They just basically attacked me outside school. And from about a week or so after that, I couldn't go into school anymore. Shortly after leaving school, Zena's ADHD was diagnosed. Not many people from school know about my pregnancy. I've told about three of my other mates. One of them, I text her it to tell her, and I ain't even got a reply back. I just keep myself to myself and keep my business to myself as well. These days, Zena spends most of her time with Chris, as he's not at work. The doctor has told me that I'm currently unfit to work and as soon as the doctor says I can go back to work, that'll be the first thing, I'll, that'll be my first priority after looking after Zena and the baby. Chris is used to living on his own and is aware that his lifestyle will have to change once their child arrives. Zena wants to be a full-time mum and a housewife and I want to go out and work so I'm providing, because I personally think that's as vital as staying at home, bringing up a child. Chris says he wants me to move in with him. So then I ain't got to do everything, all overnight feeds and everything else like that. But I won't be moving in with him until I feel it's the right time. Because me and Chris do keep going through rocky patches, so... Basically, just wait for all that to calm down properly, and then maybe we'll think about it. Despite their ups and downs, the couple are still planning a future together. I'd marry her if she married me, if she wanted to marry me. On her 18th birthday, I'd like to get married to her. He's already asked me to marry him, and I said yeah. That dress in the window is the one that Zeno likes, that wedding dress. I just like the way it's set out. 
It's not too wide, like pe some people have them. The way it shows off your figure as well. Yeah. I'd like a nice big church wedding and everything, but she wouldn't let me. I don't want a church wedding. She wouldn't let me pay out loads of money for a wedding. If I can't spend it on the wedding, then it'll get spent on the honeymoon. Today, Zena is having her 20-week scan. You're out of bed before midday. And the couple will find out what sex their baby is. You do look better. Yep. It's more finding out that baby's okay rather than actually finding out the sex straight away. Yeah, but you want to know the sex and all, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, it makes it easier. Finding out stuff. every finding out everything is okay would be more important first thing. Well, there are things like spina bifida. Down syndrome, sometimes like things like that that they'll point out on the scan. Infant mortality is 60% higher for babies born to teenagers than to older mothers. And they're also more likely to be premature. I just hope everything goes all right for her. I'd love her to have a little girl. Don't know why, I just would like her first one to be a little girl. I don't think we can cope with two of Chris's running around. He's too high Hey, Mum. Hello. 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 <laughs> well, I said they can stop now. We've got one of each. We've got a granddaughter and a grandson now, so they can both stop. Oh dear, they're very trying for a little girl. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, she went and had a look, and his legs just opened just like that, and his little finger like that. How do you feel, Chris? Excited. Baby James. Are you happy that everything's okay? Yes. You sure? Yes. Good. You can stop worrying now. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am shocked. I really thought she was going to have a girl. <laughs> no, we were saying, what about the baby having his hypoactiveness, my ADHD, both of our stubbornness and both of our anger? Um, I'm leaving the country. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. Healthy baby. They say it's going to be a nice size. Come on, wake up. Zena has five weeks to go to the birth. I love my bump. My bump's the best bit about my body. Is he kicking yet? No. Had enough of being pregnant. I want to meet him. I want him there. You know, dressing up time, sleepless nights, dirty nappies, sick. Making bottles, sterilising all the bottles. I'm getting to that stage where it's like, get out. Is this your um, teddies you want in there? Yeah. Top or bottle? Top. The family have managed to collect everything the baby will need. Yeah. From spending nearly all his time with Zena, Chris hasn't been to the house for days. Are you feeling all right now? Only her dad has spoken to him. Well, like he says, he's got to sort his head out. So, I mean, we don't know what goes on in his head. If he says he's got things going on in his head, he's got to sort that out and then decide what he's going to do. Whatever he sorts his head out, I suppose. Chris does suffer from depression. He has done for quite a while. Um, for some unknown reason, we don't know why it flares up. It's been getting worse and worse. He's been sort of, I don't know, little trying to find little arguments. A lot of things, he stopped buying us stuff. It was just basically, you know, being nasty, putting a wedge between us. With just a few weeks until the birth, Zena finally hears from Chris. Me and Chris split up. He's, he broke off with me. Hurt. I am feeling hurt. 
over two years of a relationship and he throws it away. And he says it's because of his depression he needs to get his head sorted back out. And he said basically he needs to hit rock bottom in order to make himself a better person. But he can't hit rock bottom with me. So he finished it. My head's all over the place at the moment. I've got to try and get my head straight for when James is here. Baby. Yeah. Baby's my number one priority. To cheer her up, her mum and dad are taking Zena on a day out. No. I like that, though. <laughs> to one of their favourite events. I have bought some bits for the baby from car boot. You know, if it's in good condition and... We save a lot of money, don't we, buying them from their car boot and what do mm. shop. How much are they? 50p. They pay for it. Although they've split up and don't appear to even be on speaking terms, Chris tags along. Bought it. We want to come to the car boot today, so we've let him come to the car boot today and he's just gone off and done what he wants. He ain't even spoke to us hardly, so never mind. Yeah, I think he wants to be close, so I think he still mulls up in his mind what he really wants. You know, I didn't want to finish with her, but that had to be done so I could get myself sorted. But I don't know, I've just... The best thing that's happened to me, so... You love her, why'd you break up? Because all this, with everything that's going on in my head, with all the stress that I was putting her under, I would look fair on her or the baby. So I thought the best thing to do would be break it off with her, so it's less stress for her. And I've already told her, well, when I've got my head sorted, I want to get back with her. But I don't know if there's going to be any chance of that. How much is it, a little tigger? I don't like it, it looks scary. You don't like it? No. Since they're split, Zena has told Chris she doesn't want him at the birth. And that's, one of, and that's one of the main things I wanted to do, be there for his birth. But it's heartbreaking knowing I'm not even going to be able to watch my first-born child come into the world. Being a dad, that means everything to me. You know, I'm dead excited about having my son born, so I've got to get myself better before I can even think about being a good dad to him. We're actually highly honoured. We've been joined. Yeah, he's behind us. That's what I said, we're highly honoured. I basically fell pregnant as a partnership, in a as a couple, you know, when now he's basically left me as a single mum. A few weeks later, just days before Zena's due date, Chris became gravely ill. I found him, he weren't very well, and he ended up in hospital, and they diagnosed him with pneumonia. It was touch and go, weren't it? No one knew if he was actually going to pull through. The couple had recently decided to make another go of it. Now, Chris was fighting for his life. While Chris was in hospital, Zena went into labour. Don't hold your breath, blow it through. I was on one of the wards, and of course, Chris was down the other end, getting, well, trying, well, pulling through his pneumonia. Yeah, it's very hard for Zena, I think. Um, I think once she was actually in labour, she didn't have much time to think about it. No, because it did happen think, quickly, didn't it? more about what was going on. Zena had hoped to cope with her pain on just gas and air, right, but her baby was in the wrong position. I the had back-to-back -back labour, which is where the baby's spine is against your spine. That eased off. Back-to-back labour affects 10% of women and can make the birth even more painful than usual. Get the epidural. Yeah. My labour pains were getting too much. I ended up having an epidural. She calmed down about what? Two hours after that? An hour, hour and a half. Hour and a half after that. Down the corridor, Chris was in intensive care. 
had to drain. Lungs, I think it was. Drain his lungs or whatever it was. Get the fluid off his Get lungs. Get the fluid off. I mean, while he was stated, you went and told him that Zina was in labour, didn't you? Yeah. And I was going backwards and forwards. He tried to get himself out of bed and he was still under. You're tired out now. After 24 hours in labour, Zena gave birth to a £5, 6 ounce baby boy. Her mum filled in for Chris and cut the cord. That was hard, not having him there, to see his son being brought into the world. Looks like his daddy. Just like his daddy? Yeah, looks like his daddy. Yeah. A love for a partner you can feel inside. With a baby, it's like unconditional love and you can't really feel it, you can tell it's there. I loved him from the moment I see him. Baby James is now eight days old and is back at home with his mum. Being a mum is better than I expected it to be. It's fun getting all these feeds ready. It's not a chore in my eyes. It's a pleasure to do it for him. All I want is my family together. It's not like as a family, because Chris isn't here. Chris is still in hospital. Two days ago, Zena took James to see his dad for the first time. He didn't put him down after he got hold of him. He sat there staring at him playing with his fingers. He was really happy when he was holding him. Hello, smelly bum. Chris is finally well enough to leave hospital. He's still very weak, but should make a full recovery. There's definitely a stronger bond there now than what there was before. And it's like twice as strong. It's true what they say where you don't know what you've really got until you nearly lose them. He's already said to me he wants to make a fresh start. He wants to be a proper little family. I'm happy I had my baby young. He means the world to me. He's perfect.